the second book of Chronicles, chapter 1. Solomon, the son of David, was firmly established in his kingdom, and Yahweh his God was with him, and made him exceedingly great. Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges, and to every prince in all Israel, the heads of the father's households. And Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Jaiban, for God's tent of meeting was there, which Yahweh's servant Moses had made in the wilderness. But David had brought God's ark up from Kiriath Jerim to the place that David had prepared for it, for he had pitched the tent for it at Jerusalem. For over the bronze altar that Bezillo the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made was there before Yahweh's tabernacle. And Solomon and the assembly were seeking counsel there. Solomon went up there to the bronze altar before Yahweh, which was at the tent of meeting, and offered one thousand burnt offerings on it. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for what you want me to give you. Solomon said to God, You have shown great loving kindness to David my father and have made me king in his place. Now, Yahweh God, let your promise to David my father be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, nor yet have you asked for a long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king, Therefore wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. I will give you riches, wealth, and honor, such as none of the kings have had who have been before you, and none after you will have. So Solomon came from the high place that was at Jaiban, from before the tent of meeting, to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen that he placed in the chariot cities, and with the king of Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold to be as common as stones in Jerusalem, and he made cedars to be as common as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland. The horses which Solomon had were brought out of Egypt and from Tew. The king's merchants purchased them from Tew. They imported from Egypt and exported a chariot for 600 pieces of silver and a horse for 150. They also exported them to the Hittite kings and the Syrian kings. Second Chronicles, chapter 2. Now Solomon decided to build a house for Yahweh's name and a house for his kingdom. Solomon counted out 70,000 men to bear burdens, 80,000 men who were stone cutters in the mountains, and 3,600 to oversee them. Solomon sent to Hiram the king of Tyre, saying, As you dealt with David my father, and sent him cedars to build them a house in which to dwell, so deal with me. Behold, I am about to build a house for the name of Yahweh my God, to dedicate it to him, to burn before him incense of sweet spices, for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening, on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the set feasts of Yahweh our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. The house which I am building will be great, for our God is greater than all gods. But who is able to build him a house, since heaven and the heaven of heavens can't contain him? Who am I then, that I should build him a house, except just to burn incense before him? Now therefore send me a man skillful to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in iron, and in purple, crimson, and blue, and who knows how to engrave engravings, to be with the skillful men who are with me in Judah and in Jerusalem, whom David my father provided. Send me also cedar trees, cypress trees, and album trees out of Lebanon, for I know that your servants know how to cut timber in Lebanon. Behold, my servants will be with your servants, even to prepare me timber in abundance, for the house which I am about to build will be great and wonderful. Behold, I will give to your servants, the cutters who cut timber, 20,000 cores of beaten wheat, 20,000 baths of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. Then Huram the king of Tyre answered in writing, which he sent to Solomon, because Yahweh loves his people, he has made you king over them. Huram continued, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, who has given to David the king a wise son, endowed with discretion and understanding, who would build a house for Yahweh and a house for his kingdom. Now I have sent a skillful man, endowed with understanding, Huram Abai, the son of a woman of the daughters of Dan, and his father was a man of Tyre. He is skillful to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in iron, in stone, in timber, in purple, in blue, in fine linen, and in crimson, also to engrave any kind of engraving and to devise any device, that there may be a place appointed to him with your skillful man, and with the skillful men of my lord David your father. Now therefore, the wheat, the barley, the oil, and the wine which my lord has spoken of, let him send to his servants, and we will cut wood out of Lebanon as much as you need. We will bring it to you in rafts by sea to Joppa, then you shall carry it up to Jerusalem. Solomon counted all the foreigners who were in the land of Israel, after the census with which David his father had counted them, and they found 153,600. 
He set 70,000 of them to bear burdens, 80,000 who were stone cutters in the mountains, and 3,600 overseers to assign the people their work. Second Chronicles chapter 3 Then Solomon began to build Yahweh's house at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where Yahweh appeared to David his father, which he prepared in the place that David had appointed, on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. He began to build in the second day of the second month, in the fourth year of his reign. Now these are the foundations which Solomon laid for the building of God's house. The length by cubits after the first measure was 60 cubits, and the width 20 cubits. The porch that was in front, its length across the width of the house, was 20 cubits, and the height 120, and he overlaid it within with pure gold. He made the larger room with a ceiling of cypress wood, which he overlaid with fine gold and ornamented it with palm trees and chains. He decorated the house with precious stones for beauty. The gold was gold from Parvain. He also overlaid the house, the beams, the thresholds, its walls, and its doors with gold, and engraved cherubim on the walls. He made the most holy place. Its length, according to the width of the house, was 20 cubits, and its width 20 cubits, and he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to 600 talents. The weight of the nails was 50 shekels of gold. He overlaid the upper rooms with gold. In the most holy place he made two cherubim by carving, and they overlaid them with gold. The wings of the cherubim were twenty cubits long, the wing of the one was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was five cubits, reaching to the wing of the other cherub. The wing of the other cherub was five cubits, reaching to the wall of the house, and the other wing was five cubits, joining to the wing of the other cherub. The wings of these cherubim spread themselves out twenty cubits. They stood on their feet, and their faces were toward the house. He made the veil of blue, purple, crimson, and fine linen, and ornamented it with cherubim. Also he made before the house two pillars thirty-five cubits high, and the capital that was on the top of each of them was five cubits. He made chains in the inner sanctuary, and put them on the tops of the pillars, and he made one hundred pomegranates, and put them on the chains. He set up the pillars before the temple, one on the right hand and the other on the left, and called the name of that on the right hand Jachin, and the name of that on the left Bose. Second Chronicles chapter 4 Then he made an altar of bronze, twenty cubits long, twenty cubits wide, and ten cubits high. Also he made the molten sea of ten cubits from brim to brim. It was round, five cubits high, and thirty cubits in circumference. Under it was the likeness of oxen, which encircled it for ten cubits. Encircling the sea, the oxen were in two rows, cast when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east, and the sea was set on them above, and all their hindquarters were inward. It was a hand breadth thick. Its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like the flower of a lily. It received and held three thousand baths. He also made ten basins, and put five on the right hand and five on the left, to wash in them. The things that belonged to the burnt offering were washed in them, but the sea was for the priests to wash in. He made the ten lampstands of gold according to the ordinance concerning them, and he set them in the temple, five on the right hand and five on the left. He made also ten tables, and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. He made one hundred basins of gold. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests, the great court, and doors for the court, and overlaid their doors with bronze. He set the sea on the right side of the house eastward, toward the south. Huram made the pots, the shovels, and the basins. So Huram finished doing the work that he did for King Solomon in God's house. The two pillars, the bowls, the two capitals which were on the top of the pillars, the two networks to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the top of the pillars, and the four hundred pomegranates for the two networks, two rows of pomegranates for each network to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the pillars. He also made the bases, and he made the basins on the bases, one sea and the twelve oxen under it. Huram Abai also made the pots, the shovels, the forks, and all its vessels for King Solomon, for Yahweh's house of bright bronze. The king cast them in the plain of the Jordan, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zerida. Thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance, so that the weight of the bronze could not be determined. Solomon made all the vessels that were in God's house, the golden altar, the tables with the showbread on them, and the lampstands with their lamps to burn according to the ordinance before the inner sanctuary of pure gold, and the flowers, the lamps, and the tongues of gold that was purest gold, and the snuffers, the basins, the spoons, and the firepans of pure gold. As for the entry of the house, its inner doors for the most holy place, and the doors of the main hall of the temple were of gold. Second Chronicles chapter 5 Thus all the work that Solomon did for Yahweh's house was finished. Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, even the silver, the gold, and all the vessels, and put them in the treasuries of God's house. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the princes of the fathers' households of the children of Israel, to Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of Yahweh's covenant out of David's city, which is Zion. 
So all the men of Israel assembled themselves to the king at the feast, which was in the seventh month. All the elders of Israel came. The Levites took up the ark. He brought up the ark, the tent of meeting, and all the holy vessels that were in the tent. The Levitical priests brought these up. King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel who were assembled to him were before the ark, sacrificing sheep and cattle that could not be counted or numbered for multitude. The priests brought in the ark of Yahweh's covenant to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the house, to the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread out their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark and its poles above. The poles were so long that the ends of the poles were seen from the ark in front of the inner sanctuary, but they were not seen outside, and it is there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb, when Yahweh made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. When the priests had come out of the holy place for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves and didn't keep their divisions. Also the Levites who were the singers, all of them, even Asaph, Heman, Jedetan, and their sons and their brothers, arrayed in fine linen with cymbals and stringed instruments and harps, stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding with trumpets when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahweh. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Then the house was filled with a cloud, even Yahweh's house, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for Yahweh's glory filled God's house. Second Chronicles chapter 6 Then Solomon said, Yahweh has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, that I have built you a house and home, a place for you to dwell in forever. The king turned his face and blessed all the assembly of Israel, and all the assembly of Israel stood. He said, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to David my father, and has with his hands fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city out of all the tribes of Israel to build a house in, that my name might be there, and I chose no man to be prince over my people Israel, that now I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. And Yahweh said to David my father, Whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless you shall not build the house, but your son who will come out of your body, he shall build the house for my name. Yahweh has performed his word that he spoke, for I have risen up in the pace of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as Yahweh promised, and have built the house for the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. There I have set the ark, in which is Yahweh's covenant, which he made with the children of Israel. He stood before Yahweh's altar in the presence of all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. Then he said, Yahweh, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth. You will keep covenant and loving kindness with your servants who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant David my father that which you promised him. Yes, you spoke with your mouth, and have fulfilled it with your hand, as it is today. Now therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, keep with your servant David my father that which you have promised him, saying, There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children take heed to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Now therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, let your word be verified, which you spoke to your servant David. So will God indeed dwell with men on the earth. Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens can contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Yet have respect for the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, Yahweh my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be open toward this house day and night, even toward the place where you have said that you would put your name, to listen to the prayer which your servant will pray toward this place. Listen to the petitions of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Yes, hear from your dwelling place, even from heaven, and when you hear, forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor, and an oath is laid on him to cause him to swear, and he comes and swears before your altar in this house, then hear from heaven, act, and judge your servants, bringing retribution to the wicked, to bring his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous, to give him according to his righteousness. If your people Israel are struck down before the enemy because they have sinned against you, and they turn again and confess your name, and pray and make supplication before you in this house, then hear from heaven, and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them again to the land which you gave to them and to their fathers. When the sky is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray toward this place and confess your name, 
and turn from their sin when you afflict them. Then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk, and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people for an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence, if there is blight or mildew, locust or caterpillar, if their enemies besiege them in the land of their cities, whatever plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer and supplication is made by any man or by all your people Israel, who will each know his own plague and his own sorrow, and shall spread out his hands toward this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive, and render to every man according to all his ways, whose heart you know, that they may fear you, to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Moreover, concerning the foreigner, who is not of your people Israel, when he comes from a far country for your great name's sake and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come and pray toward this house, and hear from heaven, even from your dwelling place, and do according to all that the foreigner calls to you for, that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemies by whatever way you send them, and they pray to you toward the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name, and hear from heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, and you are angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive to a land far off or near, yet if they come to their senses in the land where they are carried captive, and turn again, and make supplication to you in the land of their captivity, saying, we have sinned, we have done perversely, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been taken captive, and pray toward their land which you gave to their fathers, and the city which you have chosen, and toward the house which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven, even from your dwelling place, their prayer and their petitions, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, let, I beg you, your eyes be open, and let your ears be attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, Yahweh God, into your resting place, you, and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, Yahweh God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in goodness. Yahweh God, don't turn away the face of your anointed. Remember your loving kindnesses to David your servant. Second Chronicles chapter 7 Now when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and Yahweh's glory filled the house. The priests could not enter into Yahweh's house, because Yahweh's glory filled Yahweh's house. All the children of Israel looked on when the fire came down, and Yahweh's glory was on the house. They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground on the pavement, worshipped, and gave thanks to Yahweh, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahweh. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 head of cattle and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated God's house. The priests stood according to their positions, the Levites also with instruments of music of Yahweh, which David the king had made to give thanks to Yahweh, when David praised by their ministry, saying, For his loving kindness endures forever. The priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. Moreover, Solomon made the middle of the court that was before Yahweh's house holy, for there he offered the burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. Because the bronze altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offering, the meal offering, and the fat. So Solomon held the feast at that time for seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great assembly, from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. On the eighth day they held a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. On the twenty-third day of the seventh month he sent the people away to their tents, joyful and glad of heart for the goodness that Yahweh had shown to David, to Solomon, and to Israel his people. Thus Solomon finished Yahweh's house and the king's house, and he successfully completed all that came into Solomon's heart to make in Yahweh's house and in his own house. Then Yahweh appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the sky so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and made this house holy, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom, according as I covenanted with David your father, saying, There shall not fail you a man to be ruler in Israel. 
that if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have made holy for my name, I will cast out of my sight, and I will make it a proverb and a byword among all peoples. This house which is so high, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and say, Why has Yahweh done this to this land and to this house? He shall answer, Because they abandoned Yahweh, the God of their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and took other gods, worshipped them, and served them. Therefore he has brought all this evil on them. Second Chronicles chapter 8 At the end of twenty years, in which Solomon had built Yahweh's house and his own house, Solomon built the cities which Hiram had given to Solomon, and caused the children of Israel to dwell there. Solomon went to Hamath Soba and prevailed against it. He built Tadmer in the wilderness, and all the storage cities which he built in Hamath. Also he built Beth Horan the upper and Beth Horan the lower, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars, and Balath, and all the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the cities for his chariots, the cities for his horsemen, and all that Solomon desired to build for his pleasure in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion, as for all the people who were left of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, of their children who were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel didn't consume, of them Solomon conscripted forced labor to this day. But of the children of Israel, Solomon made no servants for his work, but they were men of war, chief of his captains, and rulers of his chariots and of his horsemen. These were the chief officers of King Solomon, even 250, who ruled over the people. Solomon brought up Pharaoh's daughter out of David's city to the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the places where Yahweh's ark has come are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to Yahweh on Yahweh's altar which he had built before the porch, even as the duty of every day required, offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbaths, on the new moons, and on the set feasts three times per year during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, during the Feast of Weeks, and during the Feast of Boots. He appointed, according to the ordinance of David his father, the divisions of the priests to their service, and the Levites to their offices, to praise and to minister before the priests, as the duty of every day required, the doorkeepers also by their divisions at every gate. For David the man of God had so commanded. He didn't depart from the commandment of the king to the priests and Levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasures. Now all the work of Solomon was accomplished from the day of the foundation of Yahweh's house until it was finished, so Yahweh's house was completed. Then Solomon went to Ezion, Jebra, and to the Lot, on the seashore in the land of Edom. Hiram sent him ships and servants who had knowledge of the sea by the hands of his servants, and they came with the servants of Solomon to Ophir, and brought from there 450 talents of gold, and brought them to King Solomon. Second Chronicles chapter 9 When the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to test Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem with a very great caravan, including camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. When she had come to Solomon, she talked with him about all that was in her heart. Solomon answered all her questions. There wasn't anything hidden from Solomon which he didn't tell her. When the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the fruit of his table, the seating of his servants, the attendance of his ministers, their clothing, his cupbearers and their clothing, and his ascent by which he went up to Yahweh's house, there was no more spirit in her. She said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of your acts and of your wisdom. However, I didn't believe their words until I came, and my eyes had seen it, and behold, half of the greatness of your wisdom wasn't told me. You exceed the fame that I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are these your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be Yahweh your God, who delighted in you and set you on his throne to be king for Yahweh your God because your God loved Israel to establish them forever. Therefore he made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. She gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great abundance, and precious stones. There was never before such spice as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The servants of Huram and the servants of Solomon, who brought gold from Afir, also brought album trees and precious stones. The king used album tree wood to make terraces for Yahweh's house and for the king's house, and harps and stringed instruments for the singers. There were none like these seen before in the land of Judah. King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatever she asked, more than that which she had brought to the king. So she turned and went to her own land, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold, in addition to that which the traders and merchants brought. All the kings of Arabia and the governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. King Solomon made 200 large shields of beaten gold. 600 shekels of beaten gold went to one large shield. He made 300 shields of beaten gold. 300 shekels of gold went to one shield. The king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. 
Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with pure gold. Here were six steps to the throne, with a footstool of gold, which were fastened to the throne, and armrests on either side by the pace of the seat, and two lions standing beside the armrests. Twelve lions stood there on the one side and on the other on the six steps. There was nothing like it made in any other kingdom. All King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. Silver was not considered valuable in the days of Solomon. For the king had ships that went to Tarshish with Huram's servants. Once every three years, the ships of Tarshish came bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom. All the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. They each brought tribute, vessels of silver, vessels of gold, clothing, armor, spices, horses, and mules every year. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots, and 12,000 horsemen that he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king of Jerusalem. He ruled over all the kings from the river, even to the land of the Philistines, and to the border of Egypt. The king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones, and he made cedars to be as abundant as the sycamore trees that are in the lowland. He brought horses for Solomon out of Egypt and out of all lands. Now the rest of the acts of Solomon, first and last, aren't they written in the history of Nathan the prophet, and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shilonite, and in the visions of Idol the seer concerning Jeroboam the son of Nebat? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in his father David's city, and Rehoboam his son reigned in his place. Second Chronicles chapter 10 Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard of it, Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. They sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all Israel came, and they spoke to Rehoboam, saying, your father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, and we will serve you. He said to them, Come again to me after three days. So the people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old man who had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel do you give me about how to answer these people? He spoke to him, saying, If you are kind to these people, please them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. He said to them, What counsel do you give, that we may give an answer to these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that your father put on us lighter. The young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you shall tell the people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now whereas my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehab on the third day as the king asked, saying, Come to me again the third day. The king answered them roughly, and King Rehoboam abandoned the counsel of the old men, and spoke to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king didn't listen to the people, for it was brought about by God, that Yahweh might establish his word, which he spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion do we have in David? We don't have an inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So all Israel departed to their tents. That as for the children of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, who was over the men subject to forced labor, and the children of Israel stoned him to death with stones. King Rehoboam hurried to get himself up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against David's house to this day. Chapter 11 When Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors, to fight against Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. But Yahweh's word came to Shemaiah the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel and Judah and Benjamin, saying, Yahweh says, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brothers. Every man return to his house, for this thing is of me. So they listened to Yahweh's words, and returned from going against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem, and built cities for defense in Judah. He built Bethlehem, Edom, Tekoa, Ezer, Soko, Adalem, Gath, Mersha, Ziph, Adorim, Lachish, Ezka, Sora, Ajalon, and Hebron, which are fortified cities in Judah and in Benjamin. He fortified the strongholds and put captains in them with stores of food, oil, and wine. He put shields and spears in every city and made them exceedingly strong. Judah and Benjamin belonged to him. The priests and the Levites who were in all Israel stood with him out of all their territory. 
For the Levites left their pasture lands and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons cast them off, that they should not execute the priest's office to Yahweh. He himself appointed priests for the high places, for the male goat and calf idols which he had made. After them, out of all the tribes of Israel, those who set their hearts to seek Yahweh, the God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to Yahweh, the God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam the son of Solomon strong for three years, for they walked three years in the way of David and Solomon. Rehoboam took a wife for himself, Mahalat, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, and of Abihel, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse. She bore him sons, Jush, Shemariah, and Zaham. After her, he took Maka, the granddaughter of Absalom, and she bore him Abijah, Atai, Caesar, and Shelomith. Rehoboam loved Maka, the granddaughter of Absalom, above all his wives and his concubines, for he took eighteen wives and sixty concubines, and became the father of twenty-eight sons and sixty daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah, the son of Maka, to be chief, the prince among his brothers, for he intended to make him king. He dealt wisely and dispersed some of his sons throughout all the lands of Judah and Benjamin to every fortified city. He gave them food in abundance, and he sought many wives for them. Chapter 12 When the kingdom of Rehoboam was established and he was strong, he abandoned Yahweh's law and all Israel with him. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem, because they had trespassed against Yahweh with twelve hundred chariots and sixty thousand horsemen. The people were without number who came with him out of Egypt, the Lubin, the Sakim, and the Ethiopians. He took the fortified cities which belonged to Judah and came to Jerusalem. Now Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah, who were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak and said to them, Yahweh says, You have forsaken me, therefore I have also left you in the hand of Shishak. Then the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves, and they said, Yahweh is righteous. When Yahweh saw that they humbled themselves, Yahweh's word came to Shemaiah, saying, They have humbled themselves. I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath won't be poured out on Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they will be his servants, that they may know my service, and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak king of Egypt came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of Yahweh's house and the treasures of the king's house. He took it all away. He also took away the shields of gold which Solomon had made. King Rehoboam made shields of bronze in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard, who kept the door of the king's house. As often as the king entered into Yahweh's house, the guard came and bore them, then brought them back into the guard room. When he humbled himself, Yahweh's wrath turned from him, so as not to destroy him altogether. Moreover, there were good things found in Judah. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned, for Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahweh had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah the Ammonites. He did that which was evil, because he didn't set his heart to seek Yahweh. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, aren't they written in the histories of Shemaiah the prophet and of Idol the seer, in the genealogies? There were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in David's city, and Abijah his son reigned in his place. Chapter 13 In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, Abijah began to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Jack. There was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Abijah joined battle with an army of valiant men of war, even 400,000 chosen men, and Jeroboam set the battle in array against him with 800,000 chosen men, who were mighty men of fat. Abijah stood up on Mount Zemarim, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, and said, Hear me, Jeroboam and all Israel, ought you not to know that Yahweh, the God of Israel, gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his Lord. Worthless men were gathered to him, wicked fellows who strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. Now you intend to withstand the kingdom of Yahweh in the hand of the sons of David. You are a great multitude, and the golden calves which Jeroboam make you for gods are with you. Haven't you driven out the priests of Yahweh, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and made priests for yourselves according to the ways of the peoples of other lands? Whoever comes to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may be a priest of those who are no gods. But as for us, Yahweh is our God, and we have not forsaken him. We have priests serving Yahweh, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites in their work. They burnt to Yahweh every morning and every evening burnt offerings and sweet incense. They also set the showbread in order on the pure table, and care for the gold lamp stand with its lamps, to burn every evening, for we keep the instruction of Yahweh our God. But you have forsaken him. 
Behold, God is with us at our head, and his priests with the trumpets of alarm to sound an alarm against you. Children of Israel, don't fight against Yahweh, the God of your fathers, for you will not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to come about behind them, so they were before Judah, and the ambush was behind them. When Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind them, and they cried to Yahweh, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout. As the men of Judah shouted, God struck Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. The children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. Abijah and his people killed them with a great slaughter, so 500,000 chosen men of Israel fell down slain. Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied on Yahweh, the God of their fathers. Abijah pursued Jeroboam, and took cities from him, Bethel with its villages, Jeshana with its villages, and Ephron with its villages. Jeroboam didn't recover strength again in the days of Abijah. Yahweh struck him, and he died. But Abijah grew mighty, and took for himself fourteen wives, and became the father of twenty-two sons and sixteen daughters. The rest of the acts of Abijah, his ways, and his sayings are written in the commentary of the prophet Idol. Second Chronicles chapter 14 So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in David's city, and Asa his son reigned in his place. In his days the land was quiet ten years. Asa did that which was good and right in Yahweh his God's eyes. For he took away the foreign altars in the high places, broke down the pillars, cut down the Asherah poles, and commanded Judah to seek Yahweh, the God of their fathers, and to obey his law and command. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the sun images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. He built fortified cities in Judah, for the land was quiet, and he had no war in those years, because Yahweh had given him rest. For he said to Judah, Let's build these cities and make walls around them, with towers, gates, and bars. The land is yet before us, because we have sought Yahweh our God. We have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. Asa had an army of 300,000 out of Judah who bore bucklers and spears, and 280,000 out of Benjamin who bore shields and drew bows. All these were mighty men of valor. Sarah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million troops and 300 chariots, and he came to Mersha. Then Asa went out to meet him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Sephath at Mersha. Asa cried to Yahweh his God, and said, Yahweh, there is no one besides you to help, between the mighty and him who has no strength. Help us, Yahweh our God, for we rely on you, and in your name I will come against this multitude. Yahweh, you are our God. Don't let man prevail against you. So Yahweh struck the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. Asa and the people who were with him pursued them to Jerah. So many of the Ethiopians fell that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before Yahweh and before his army. Judah's army carried away very much booty. They struck all the cities around Jerah, for the fear of Yahweh came on them. They plundered all the cities, for there was much plunder in them. They also struck the tents of those who had livestock, and carried away sheep and camels in abundance, then returned to Jerusalem. Chapter 15 The Spirit of God came on Azariah the son of Odit. He went out to meet Asa, and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. Yahweh is with you while you are with him, and if you seek him, he will be found by you, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long time Israel was without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. But when in their distress they turned to Yahweh, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. In those times there was no peace to him who went out, nor to him who came in, but great troubles were on all the inhabitants of the lands. They were broken in pieces, nation against nation, and city against city, for God troubled them with all adversity. Let you be strong, don't let your hands be slack, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Odith the prophet, he took courage, and put away the abominations out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of the cities which he had taken from the hill country of Ephraim, and he renewed Yahweh's altar that was before Yahweh's porch. He gathered all Judah and Benjamin, and those who lived with them out of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simon, for they came to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that Yahweh his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. They sacrificed to Yahweh in that day of the plunder which they had brought, seven hundred head of cattle and seven thousand sheep. They entered into the covenant to seek Yahweh, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul, and that whoever would not seek Yahweh, the God of Israel, should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. They swore to Yahweh with a loud voice, with shouting, with trumpets, and with cornets. All Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found by them. Then Yahweh gave them rest all around. Also Makkah, the mother of Asa the king, he removed from being queen mother, because she had made an abominable image for an Asher. So Asa cut down her image, ground it into dust, and burned it at the brook Kidron. 
that the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Esau was perfect all his days. He brought the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver, gold, and vessels into God's house. There was no more war to the 35th year of Esau's reign. Chapter 16 In the 36th year of Asa's reign, Basha king of Israel went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might not allow anyone to go out or come into Asa king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of Yahweh's house and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad king of Syria, who lived at Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between me and you, as there was between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you silver and gold. Go, break your treaty with Basha king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And had had listened to King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel, and they struck Ijam, Dan, Abel Maim, and all the storage cities of Naphtali. When Basha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah, and let his work cease. And Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah, with which Basha had built, and he built Jeba and Mizpah with them. At that time Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria, and have not relied on Yahweh your God, Therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped out of your hand. Weren't the Ethiopians and the Lubim a huge army, with chariots and exceedingly many horsemen? Yet, because you relied on Yahweh, he delivered them into your hand. For Yahweh's eyes run back and forth throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. You have done foolishly in this, for from now on you will have wars. Then Esa was angry with the seer, and put him in the prison, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. Esa oppressed some of the people at the same time, Behold, the acts of Asa, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. In the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa was diseased in his feet. His disease was exceedingly great, yet in his disease he didn't seek Yahweh, but just the physicians. Asa slept with his fathers and died in the forty-first year of his reign. They buried him in his own tomb, which he had dug out for himself in David's city, and laid him in the bed which was filled with sweet odors and various kinds of spices prepared by the perfumer's art. And they made a very great fire for him. Second Chronicles chapter 17 Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. He placed forces in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. Yahweh was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and didn't seek the balls, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not in the ways of Israel. Therefore Yahweh established the kingdom in his hand. All Judah brought tribute to Jehoshaphat, and he had riches and honor in abundance. His heart was lifted up in the ways of Yahweh. Furthermore, he took away the high places in the Asherah poles out of Judah. Also in the third year of his reign he sent his princes, even Ben-Hail, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathanael, and Micaiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them Levites, even Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Asahel, Shemaramoth, Jehanathan, Adonijah, Tabijah, and Tobadonijah, the Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram, the priests, they taught in Judah, having the book of Yahweh's law with them. They went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught among the people. The fear of Yahweh fell on all the kingdoms of the lands that were around Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents in silver for tribute. The Arabians also brought him flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. Jehoshaphat grew great exceedingly, and he built fortresses and store cities in Judah. He had many works in the cities of Judah, and men of war, mighty men of valor, in Jerusalem. This was the numbering of them according to their father's houses, from Judah, the captains of thousands, and now the captain, and with him three hundred thousand mighty men of valor, and next to him Jehohanan the captain, and with him two hundred eighty thousand, and next to him Amasiah the son of Sikri, who willingly offered himself to Yahweh, and with him two hundred thousand mighty men of valor, from Benjamin, Eliada, a mighty man of valor, and with him two hundred thousand armed with bow and shield, and next to him Jehazabad, and with him one hundred eighty thousand ready and prepared for war. These were those who waited on the king, in addition to those whom the king put in the fortified cities throughout all Judah. Second Chronicles chapter 18 Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance, and he allied himself with Ahab. After some years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. Ahab killed sheep and cattle for him in abundance, and for the people who were with him, and moved him to go up with him to Ramath Gilead. Ahab king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramath Gilead? He answered him, I am as you are, and my people as your people. We will be with you in the war. Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire first for Yahweh's word. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, four hundred men, and said to them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? They said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the hand of the king. 
But Jehoshaphat said, Isn't there here a prophet of Yahweh besides, that we may inquire of him? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of Yahweh. But I hate him, for he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Micaiah the son of Imlah. Jehoshaphat said, Don't let the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Get Micaiah the son of Imlah quickly. Now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah each sat on his throne, arrayed in their robes, and they were sitting in an open place at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah the son of Chenana made himself horns of iron and said, Yahweh says, With these you shall push the Syrians until they are consumed. All the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for Yahweh will deliver it into the hand of the king. A messenger who went to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one mouth. Let your word, therefore, please be like one of theirs, and speak good. Micaiah said, As Yahweh lives, I will say what my God says. When he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? He said, Go up and prosper. They shall be delivered into your hand. The king said to him, How many times shall I adjure you that you speak to me nothing but the truth in Yahweh's name? He said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, as sheep that have no shepherd. Yahweh said, These have no master. Let them each return to his house in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Micaiah said, Therefore hear Yahweh's word. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne, and all the army of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Yahweh said, We will entice Ahab king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. One spoke saying in this way, and another saying in that way. The spirit came out, stood before Yahweh, and said, I will entice him. Yahweh said to him, How? He said, I will go, and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He said, You will entice him, and will prevail also. Go and do so. Now therefore, behold, Yahweh has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these your prophets, and Yahweh has spoken evil concerning you. Then Zedekiah the son of Chenana came near, and struck Micaiah on the cheek, and said, Which way did Yahweh's spirit go for me to speak to you? Micaiah said, Behold, you shall see on that day, when you go into an inner room to hide yourself. The king of Israel said, Take Micaiah, and carry him back to Ammon the governor of the city, and to Josh the king's son, and say, The king says, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction, until I return in peace. Micaiah said, If you return at all in peace, Yahweh has not spoken by me. He said, Listen, you people, all of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into the battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went into the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of his chariots, saying, Don't fight with small nor great, except only with the king of Israel. When the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they turned around to fight against him. Yet Jehoshaphat cried out, and Yahweh helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. When the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. A certain man drew his bow at random, and struck the king of Israel between the joints of the armor. Therefore he said to the driver of the chariot, Turn around and carry me out of the battle, for I am severely wounded. The battle increased that day. However, the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening, and at about sunset he died. Chapter 19 Jehoshaphat the king of Judah returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. Jehu the son of Hanani the seer went out to meet him, and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked, and love those who hate Yahweh? Because of this, wrath is on you from before Yahweh. Nevertheless, there are good things found in you, and that you have put away the Asherah out of the land, and have set your heart to seek God. Jehoshaphat lived at Jerusalem, and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim, and brought them back to Yahweh, the God of their fathers. He set judges in the land throughout all the fortified cities of Judah, city by city, and said to the judges, Consider what you do, for you don't judge for man, but for Yahweh, and he is with you in the judgment. Now therefore let the fear of Yahweh be on you. Take heed and do it, for there is no iniquity with Yahweh our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of bribes. Moreover, in Jerusalem Jehoshaphat appointed certain Levites, priests, and heads of the fathers' households of Israel to give judgment for Yahweh and for controversies. They returned to Jerusalem. He commanded them, saying, You shall do this in the fear of Yahweh, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Whenever any controversy comes to you from your brothers who dwell in their cities, between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and ordinances, you must warn them that they not be guilty toward Yahweh, and so wrath come on you and on your brothers. Do this, and you will not be guilty. Behold, Amariah the chief priest is over you in all matters of Yahweh, 
and Zebediah the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, and all the king's matters. Also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously, and may Yahweh be with the good. Chapter 20 After this, the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them some of the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then some came who told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea from Syria. Behold, they are in Hazaz and Tamar. Jehoshaphat was alarmed and set himself to seek the Yahweh. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Judah gathered themselves together to seek help from Yahweh. They came out of all the cities of Judah to seek Yahweh. Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in Yahweh's house before the new court. And he said, Yahweh, the God of our fathers, aren't you God in heaven? Aren't you ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand so that no one is able to withstand you. Didn't you, our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it to the offspring of Abraham your friend forever? They lived in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If evil comes on us, the sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this house and before you and cry to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. Now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned away from them and didn't destroy them. Behold, how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All Judah stood before Yahweh with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then Yahweh's spirit came on Jahaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Matainiah, the Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the middle of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, Yahweh says to you, Don't be afraid, and don't be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they are coming up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley, before the wilderness of Jero. You will not need to fight this battle. Save yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid, nor be dismayed. Go out against them tomorrow, for Yahweh is with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before Yahweh, worshipping Yahweh. The Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise Yahweh, the God of Israel, with an exceedingly loud voice. He rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Yahweh your God, so you will be established. Believe his prophets, so you will prosper. When he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to Yahweh and give praise in holy array as they go out before the army, and say, Give thanks to Yahweh, for his loving kindness endures forever. When they began to sing and to praise, Yahweh set ambushers against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were struck. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. When they had finished the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy each other. When Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked at the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and there were none who escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their plunder, they found among them in abundance both riches and dead bodies with precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. They took plunder for three days, it was so much. On the fourth day, they assembled themselves in Baraka Valley, for there they blessed Yahweh. Therefore the name of that place was called Baraka Valley to this day. Then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, with Jehoshaphat in front of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for Yahweh had made them to rejoice over their enemies. They came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments, harps, and trumpets to Yahweh's house. The fear of God was on all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard that Yahweh fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. So Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was thirty-five years old when he began to reign. He reigned twenty-five years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. He walked in the way of Asa, his father, and didn't turn away from it, doing that which was right in Yahweh's eyes. However, the high places were not taken away, and the people had still not set their hearts on the God of their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, first and last, behold, they are written in the history of Jehu, the son of Hanani, which is included in the book of the kings of Israel. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel. The same did very wickedly. He joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. They made the ships in Ezra and Jebur. Then Eliza the son of Dadabahu of Mersha prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have joined yourself with Ahaziah, Yahweh has destroyed your works. The ships were wrecked so that they were not able to go to Tarshish. Second Chronicles, chapter 21. 
Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in David's city, and Jehoram his son reigned in his place. He had brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephatia. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father gave them great gifts of silver, of gold, and of precious things with fortified cities in Judah. But he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram had risen up over the kingdom of his father, and had strengthened himself, he killed all his brothers with the sword, and also some of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. He walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did Ahab's house, for he had Ahab's daughter as his wife. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight. However, Yahweh would not destroy David's house because of the covenant that he had made with David, and as he promised to give a lamp to him and to his children always. In his days Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah and made a king over themselves. Then Jehoram went there with his captains and all his chariots with him. He rose up by night and struck the Edomites who surrounded him, along with the captains of the chariots. So Edom has been in revolt from under the hand of Judah to this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time from under his hand, because he had forsaken Yahweh, the God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, and made the inhabitants of Jerusalem play the prostitute, and led Judah astray. A letter came to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Yahweh, the God of David your father, says, Because you have not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat your father, nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah, but have walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and have made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to pay the prostitute like Ahab's house did, and also have slain your brothers of your father's house, who were better than yourself. Behold, Yahweh will strike your people with a great plague, including your children, your wives, and all your possessions, and you will have great sickness with the disease of your bowels, until your bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Yahweh stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians who are beside the Ethiopians, and they came up against Judah, broke into it, and carried away all the possessions that were found in the king's house, including his sons and his wives, so that there was no son left to him except Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. After all this, Yahweh struck him in his bowels with an incurable disease. In process of time, at the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, and he died of severe diseases. His people made no burning for him, like the burning of his fathers. He was thirty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. He departed with no one's regret. They buried him in David's city, but not in the tombs of the kings. Chapter 22 The inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his place, because the band of men who came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the oldest. So Ahaziah the son of Jehoram king of Judah reigned. Ahaziah was forty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Ataliah, the daughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of Ahab's house, because his mother was his counselor in acting wickedly. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, as did Ahab's house, for they were his counselors after the death of his father, to his destruction. He also followed their counsel, and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramat Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Joram. He returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which they had given him at Ram, when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. Azariah the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Jehoram the son of Ahab in Jezreel, because he was sick. Now the destruction of Ahaziah was of God, and then he went to Joram, for when he had come, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu the son of Ninshi, whom Yahweh had anointed to cut off Ahab's house. When Jehu was executing judgment on Ahab's house, he found the princes of Judah and the sons of the brothers of Ahaziah serving Ahaziah, and killed them. He saw the Haziah, and they caught him, and they brought him to Jehu, and killed him, and they buried him. For they said, He is the son of Jehoshaphat, who saw Yahweh with all his heart. The house of Ahaziah had no power to hold the kingdom. Now when Ataliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal offspring of the house of Judah. At Jehoshaphat, the king's daughter, took Josh, the son of Ahaziah, and stealthily rescued him from among the king's sons who were slain, and put him and his nurse in the bedroom. So Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, the wife of Jehoiada the priest, hid him from Ataliah, so that she didn't kill him. He was with them hidden in God's house six years while Ataliah reigned over the land. Chapter 23 In the seventh year, Jehoiada strengthened himself, and took the captains of hundreds, Azariah the son of Jeroham, Ishmael the son of Jehohanan, Azariah the son of Obed, Masiah the son of Adiah, and Elishaphat the son of Sikri, into a covenant with him. He went around in Judah and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah, and the heads of fathers' households of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. 
all the assembly made a covenant with the king in God's house, Jehoiada said to them, Behold, the king's son must reign, as Yahweh has spoken concerning the sons of David. This is the thing that you must do. A third part of you, who come in on the Sabbath, of the priests and of the Levites, shall be gatekeepers of the thresholds. A third part shall be at the king's house, and a third part at the gate of the foundation. All the people will be in the courts of Yahweh's house. And let no one come into Yahweh's house except the priests and those who minister of the Levites. They shall come in, for they are holy, but all the people shall follow Yahweh's instructions. The Levites shall surround the king, every man with his weapons in his hand. Whoever comes into the house, let him be slain. He with the king when he comes in and when he goes out. So the Levites and all Judah did according to all that Jehoiada the priest commanded. They each took his men, those who were to come in on the Sabbath, with those who were to go out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada the priest didn't dismiss the shift. Jehoiada the priest delivered to the captains of hundreds the spears, bucklers, and shields that had been King David's, which were in God's house. He said all the people, every man with his weapon in his hand, from the right side of the house to the left side of the house, near the altar in the house, around the king. Then they brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, gave him the covenant, and made him king. Jehoiada and his sons anointed him, and they said, Long live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king, she came to the people into Yahweh's house. And she looked, and behold, the king stood by his pillar at the entrance, with the captains and the trumpeters by the king. All the people of the land rejoiced and blew trumpets. The singers also played musical instruments and led the singing of praise. Then Athaliah tore her clothes and said, Treason, treason. Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds who were set over the army and said to them, Bring her out between the ranks, and whoever follows her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, Don't kill her in Yahweh's house. So they made way for her. She went to the entrance of the horse gate to the king's house, and they killed her there. Jehoiada made a covenant between himself, all the people, and the king, that they should be Yahweh's people. All the people went to the house of Baal, broke it down, broke his altars and his images in pieces, and killed man the priest of Baal before the altars. Jehoiada appointed the officers of Yahweh's house under the hand of the Levitical priests whom David had distributed in Yahweh's house, to offer the burnt offerings of Yahweh, as it is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and with singing, as David had ordered. He set the gatekeepers at the gates of Yahweh's house, that no one who was unclean in anything should enter in. He took the captains of hundreds, the nobles, the governors of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from Yahweh's house. They came through the upper gate to the king's house, and set the king on the throne of the kingdom. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, they had slain at their liar with the sword. Second Chronicles, chapter 24. Josh was seven years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zabiah of Beersheba. Josh did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes all the days of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he became the father of sons and daughters. After this, Josh intended to restore Yahweh's house. He gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather money to repair the house of your God from all Israel from year to year. See that you expedite this matter. However, the Levites didn't do it right away. The king called for Jehoiada the chief and said to him, Why haven't you required of the Levites to bring in the tax of Moses the servant of Yahweh? and of the assembly of Israel, out of Judah and out of Jerusalem, for the tent of the testimony. For the sons of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken up God's house, and they also gave all the dedicated things of Yahweh's house to the balls. So the king commanded, and they made a chest, and set it outside at the gate of Yahweh's house. They made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem, to bring in for Yahweh the tax that Moses the servant of God laid on Israel in the wilderness. All the princes and all the people rejoiced, and brought in, and cast into the chest, until they had filled it. Whenever the chest was brought to the king's officers by the hand of the Levites, and when they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe and the chief priest's officer came and emptied the chest, and took it, and carried it to its place again. Thus they did day by day, and gathered money in abundance. The king and Jehoiada gave it to those who did the work of the service of Yahweh's house. They hired masons and carpenters to restore Yahweh's house, and also those who worked iron and bronze to repair Yahweh's house. So the workmen worked, and the work of repairing went forward in their hands. They set up God's house as it was designed, and strengthened it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money before the king and Jehoiada, from which were made vessels for Yahweh's house, even vessels with which to minister and to offer, including spoons and vessels of gold and silver. They offered burnt offerings in Yahweh's house continually all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada grew old and was full of days, and he died. He was 130 years old when he died. They buried him in David's city among the kings, because he had done good in Israel, and toward God and his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and bowed down to the king. Then the king listened to them. 
He abandoned the house of Yahweh, the God of their fathers, and served the Asherah poles and the idols. So wrath came on Judah and Jerusalem for this their guiltiness. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again to Yahweh, and they testified against them, but they would not listen. The Spirit of God came on Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, and he stood above the people and said to them, God says, Why do you disobey Yahweh's commandments, so that you can't prosper? Because you have forsaken Yahweh, he has also forsaken you. They conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of Yahweh's house. Thus Joseph the king didn't remember the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but killed his son. When he died, he said, May Yahweh look at it and repay it. At the end of the year, the army of the Syrians came up against him. They came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all their plunder to the king of Damascus. So the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men and Yahweh delivered a very great army into their hand because they had forsaken Yahweh, the God of their fathers. So they executed judgment on Josh. When they had departed from him, his own servants conspired against him for the blood of the sons of Jehoiada the priest and killed him on his bed and he died. They buried him in David's city, but they didn't bury him in the tombs of the kings. These are those who conspired against him, Zabad the son of Shimeth the Ammonites, and Jehazabad the son of Shimrit the Moabites. Now concerning his sons, the greatness of the burdens laid on him, and the rebuilding of God's house, behold, they are written in the commentary of the book of the kings. Amaziah his son reigned in his place. Chapter 25 Amaziah was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoden of Jerusalem. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, but now with a perfect heart. Now when the kingdom was established to him, he killed his servants who had killed his father the king, that he didn't put their children to death, but did according to that which is written in the law in the book of Moses, as Yahweh commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers that every man shall die for his own sin. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and ordered them according to their father's houses, and their captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, even all Judah and Benjamin. He counted them from twenty years old and upward, and found that there were three hundred thousand chosen men, able to go out to war, who could handle spear and shield. He also hired one hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for one hundred talents of silver. A man of God came to him, saying, O king, don't let the army of Israel go with you, for Yahweh is now with Israel, with all the children of Ephraim. That if you will go, take action, and be strong for the battle. God will overthrow you before the enemy, for God has power to help and to overthrow. And Isaiah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? The man of God answered, Yahweh is able to give you much more than this. Then Amaziah separated them, the army that had come to him out of Ephraim, to go home again. Therefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah, and they returned home in fierce anger. Amaziah took courage and led his people out and went to the Valley of Salt and struck ten thousand of the children of Seir. The children of Judah carried away ten thousand alive and brought them to the top of the rock and threw them down from the top of the rock so that they all were broken in pieces. But the men of the army whom Amaziah sent back that they should not go with him to battle fell on the cities of Judah from Samaria even to Beth Horon and struck of them three thousand and took much plunder. Now after Amaziah had come from the slaughter of the Edomites, he brought the gods of the children of Seir and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burned incense to them. Therefore Yahweh's anger burned against Amaziah, and he sent to him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought after the gods of the people, which have not delivered their own people out of your hand? As he talked with him, the king said to him, Have we made you one of the king's counselors? Stop, why should you be struck down? Then the prophet stopped and said, I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. Then Amaziah king of Judah consulted his advisers and sent to Josh, the son of Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let's look one another in the face. Josh king of Israel sent to Amaziah king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son as his wife. Then a wild animal that was in Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thistle. You say to yourself that you have struck Edom, and your heart lifts you up to boast. Now stay at home. Why should you meddle with trouble, that you should fall, even you and Judah with you? But Amaziah would not listen, for it was of God, that he might deliver them into the hand of their enemies, because they had sought after the gods of Edom. So Josh king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah looked one another in the face at Beth Shemesh, which belongs to Judah. Judah was defeated by Israel, so every man fled to his tent. 
Josh king of Israel took Amaziah king of Judah, the son of Josh, the son of Jehoaz, at Beth Shemesh, and brought him to Jerusalem, and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate, four hundred cubits. He took all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in God's house with Obedim, and the treasures of the king's house, and the hostages, and returned to Samaria. Amaziah the son of Josh, king of Judah, lived for fifteen years after the death of Josh, son of Jehoaz, king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are they written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Now from the time that Amaziah turned away from following Yahweh, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem. He fled to Lachish, but they sent after him to Lachish and killed him there. They brought him on horses and buried him with his fathers in the city of Judah. Chapter 26 All the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. He built a lot and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was sixteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the vision of God. And as long as he saw Yahweh, God made him prosper. He went out and fought against the Philistines, and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jabne, and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities in the country of Ashdod, and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians who lived in Gerbal, and the Munim. The Ammonites gave tribute to Uzziah. His name spread abroad even to the entrance of Egypt, for he grew exceedingly strong. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. He built towers in the wilderness, and dug out many cisterns, for he had much livestock, both in the lowlands and in the plains. He had farmers and vineyard keepers in the mountains and in the fruitful fields, for he loved farming. Moreover, Uzziah had an army of fighting men who went out to war by bands, according to the number of their reckoning made by Jael the scribe and Masiah the officer, under the hand of Hanani, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the heads of fathers' households, even the mighty men of valor, was 2,600. Under their hand was an army, 307,500, who made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. As I had prepared for them, even for all the army, shields, spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows, and stones for slinging. In Jerusalem, he made devices invented by skillful men to be on the towers and on the battlements with which to shoot arrows and great stones. His name spread far abroad because he was marvelously helped until he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up so that he did corruptly and he trespassed against Yahweh his God, for he went into Yahweh's temple to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him eighty priests of Yahweh, who were valiant men. He resisted Uzziah the king, and said to him, It isn't for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to Yahweh, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. It will not be for your honor from Yahweh God. Then Uzziah was angry. He had a censer in his hand to burn incense, and while he was angry with the priests, the leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priests in Yahweh's house, beside the altar of incense. Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out quickly from there. Indeed, he himself also hurried to go out, because Yahweh had struck him. Isaiah the king was a leper to the day of his death, and lived in a separate house, being a leper, for he was cut off from Yahweh's house. Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Isaiah, first and last, Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, wrote, So Isaiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the field of burial which belonged to the kings, for they said, He is a leper. Jotham his son reigned in his place. Second Chronicles, chapter 27. Jotham was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Sadak. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, according to all that his father Isaiah had done. However, he didn't enter into Yahweh's temple. The people still acted corruptly. He built the upper gate of Yahweh's house, and he built much on the wall of Aphel. Moreover, he built cities in the hill country of Judah, and in the forests he built fortresses and towers. He also fought with the king of the children of Ammon, and prevailed against them. The children of Ammon gave him the same year one hundred talents of silver, ten thousand cores of wheat, and ten thousand cores of barley. The children of Ammon also gave that much to him in the second year, and in the third. So Jatam became mighty, because he ordered his ways before Yahweh his God. Now the rest of the acts of Jatam, and all his wars and his ways, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. 
Shatham slept with his fathers, and they buried him in David's city, and Ahaz his son reigned in his place. Second Chronicles chapter 28 Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. He didn't do that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, like David his father, that he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and also made molten images for the Baals. Moreover, he burned incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and burned his children in the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed and burned incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Therefore Yahweh his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. He struck him, and carried away from him a great multitude of captives, and brought them to Damascus. He was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who struck him with a great slaughter. For Pekah the son of Ramali killed in Judah 120,000 in one day, all of them valiant men, because they had forsaken Yahweh, the God of their fathers. Sikri, a mighty man of Ephraim, killed Maziah the king's son, as became the ruler of the house, and Elkanah who was next to the king. The children of Israel carried away captive of their brothers two hundred thousand women, sons, and daughters, and also took away much plunder from them, and brought the plunder to Samaria. But a prophet of Yahweh was there, whose name was Odit, and he went out to meet the army that came to Samaria, and said to them, Behold, because Yahweh, the God of your fathers, was angry with Judah, he has delivered them into your hand, and you have slain them in a rage which has reached up to heaven. Now you intend to degrade the children of Judah and Jerusalem as male and female slaves for yourselves. Aren't there even with you trespasses of your own against Yahweh your God? Now hear me therefore, and send back the captives that you have taken captive from your brothers. For the fierce wrath of Yahweh is on you. And some of the heads of the children of Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johanan, Berechiah the son of Meshelamat, Jezkiah the son of Shalom, and Amasah the son of Hadlai, stood up against those who came from the war, and said to them, You must not bring in the captives here, for you intend that which will bring on us a trespass against Yahweh, to add to our sins and to our guilt. For our guilt is great, and there is fierce wrath against Israel. So the armed men left the captives and the plunder before the princes and all the assembly. The men who have been mentioned by name rose up and took the captives, and with the plunder clothed all who were naked among them, dressed them, gave them sandals, gave them something to eat and to drink, anointed them, carried all the feeble of them on donkeys, and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, to their brothers. Then they returned to Samaria. At that time King Ahaz sent to the kings of Assyria to help him. For again the Edomites had come and struck Judah, and carried away captives. The Philistines also had invaded the cities of the lowland and of the south of Judah, and had taken Beth Shemesh, Ajalon, Jedarath, Soko with its villages, Timna with its villages, and also Gimzo and its villages, and they lived there. For Yahweh brought Judah low because of Ahaz king of Israel, because he acted without restraint in Judah and trespassed severely against Yahweh. Tilgath Pilnas, or king of Assyria, came to him and gave him trouble, but didn't strengthen him. For Ahaz took away a portion out of Yahweh's house, and out of the house of the king and of the princes, and gave it to the king of Assyria, but it didn't help him. In the time of his distress, he trespassed yet more against Yahweh, the same king Ahaz. For he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus which had defeated him. He said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria helped them, I will sacrifice to them, that they may help me, that they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. Ahaz gathered together the vessels of God's house, cut the vessels of God's house in pieces, and shut up the doors of Yahweh's house. And he made himself altars in every corner of Jerusalem. In every city of Judah he made high places to burn incense to other gods, and provoked Yahweh, the God of his fathers, to anger. Now the rest of his acts, and all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Ahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem, because they didn't bring him into the tombs of the kings of Israel, and Hezekiah his son reigned in his place. Chapter 29 Hezekiah began to reign when he was twenty-five years old, and he reigned twenty-nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, according to all that David his father had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of Yahweh's house and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together into the wide place on the east, and said to them, Listen to me, you Levites. Now sanctify yourselves, and sanctify the house of Yahweh, the God of your fathers, and carry the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers were unfaithful, and have done that which was evil in Yahweh our God's sight, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of Yahweh, and turned their backs. Also they have shut up the doors of the porch, and put out the lamps, and have not burned incense, nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Therefore Yahweh's wrath was on Judah and Jerusalem, and he has delivered them to be tossed back and forth, to be an astonishment and a hissing, as you see with your eyes. 
For behold, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with Yahweh, the God of Israel, that his fierce anger may turn away from us. My sons, don't be negligent now, for Yahweh has chosen you to stand before him, to minister to him, and that you should be his ministers and burn incense. And the Levites arose, Mahath, the son of Amasai, and Joel, the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of Merari, Tish, the son of Abdi, and Azariah, the son of Jehalel, and of the Jershonites, Joel, the son of Sima, and Eden, the son of Joel, and of the sons of Elizaphan, Shimri, and Jewel, and of the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Matanai, and of the sons of Heman, Jehu, and Shimei, and of the sons of Jedithan, Shemaiah, and Uzziel. They gathered their brothers, sanctified themselves, and went in, according to the commandment of the king by Yahweh's words, to cleanse Yahweh's house. The priests went into the inner part of Yahweh's house to cleanse it, and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in Yahweh's temple into the court of Yahweh's house. The Levites took it from there to carry it out to the brook Kidron. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month they came to Yahweh's porch. They sanctified Yahweh's house in eight days, and on the sixteenth day of the first month they finished. Then they went into Hezekiah the king within the palace and said, We have cleansed all Yahweh's house, including the altar of burnt offering with all its vessels, and the table of showbread with all its vessels. Moreover, we have prepared and sanctified all the vessels which King Ahaz threw away in his reign when he was unfaithful. Behold, they are before Yahweh's altar. And Hezekiah the king arose early, gathered the princes of the city, and went up to Yahweh's house. He brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven male goats, for a sin offering for the kingdom, for the sanctuary, and for Judah. He commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on Yahweh's altar. So they killed the bulls, and the priests received the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. He killed the rams and sprinkled the blood on the altar. He also killed the lambs and sprinkled the blood on the altar. He brought near the male goats for the sin offering before the king and the assembly, and they laid their hands on them. Then the priests killed them, and they made a sin offering with their blood on the altar to make atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. He set the Levites in Yahweh's house with cymbals, with stringed instruments, and with harps, according to the commandment of David, of God the king's seer, and Nathan the prophet, for the commandment was from Yahweh by his prophets. The Levites stood with David's instruments, and the priests with the trumpets. Hezekiah commanded them to offer the burnt offering on the altar. When the burnt offering began, Yahweh's song also began, along with the trumpets and instruments of David king of Israel. All the assembly worshipped, the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. All this continued until the burnt offering was finished. When they had finished offering, the king and all who were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praises to Yahweh with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. They sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered, Now you have consecrated yourselves to Yahweh. Come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into Yahweh's house. The assembly brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a willing heart brought burnt offerings. The number of the burnt offerings which the assembly brought was seventy bulls, one hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to Yahweh. The consecrated things were six hundred head of cattle and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they could not skin all the burnt offerings. Therefore their brothers the Levites helped them until the work was ended, and until the priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. Also the burnt offerings were in abundance, with the fat of the peace offerings, and with the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of Yahweh's house was set in order. Hezekiah and all the people rejoiced because of that which God had prepared for the people, for the thing was done suddenly. Chapter 30 Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to Yahweh's house at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to Yahweh, the God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel with his princes and all the assembly in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient number, and the people had not gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. The thing was right in the eyes of the king and of all the assembly. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to Yahweh, the God of Israel, at Jerusalem, for they had not kept it in great numbers in the way it is written. So the couriers went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, according to the commandment of the king, saying, You children of Israel, turn again to Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to the remnant of you that have escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. 
Go and be like your fathers and like your brothers who trespassed against Yahweh, the God of their fathers, so that he gave them up to desolation. As you see, now don't be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to Yahweh and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve Yahweh your God, that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For if you turn again to Yahweh, your brothers and your children will find compassion with those who led them captive and will come again into this land, because Yahweh your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. So the couriers passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even to Zebulun. But people ridiculed them and mocked them. Nevertheless, some men of Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also the hand of God came on Judah to give them one heart, to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by Yahweh's word. Many people assembled at Jerusalem to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great assembly. They arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and they took away all the altars for incense and threw them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the second month. The priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought burnt offerings into Yahweh's house. They stood in their place after their order, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites were in charge of killing the Passovers for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them to Yahweh. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover other than the way it is written. For Hezekiah had prayed for them, saying, May the good Yahweh pardon everyone. Who sets his heart to seek God, Yahweh, the God of his fathers, even if they aren't clean according to the purification of the sanctuary? Yahweh listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. The children of Israel who were present at Jerusalem kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with great gladness. The Levites and the priests praised Yahweh day by day, singing with loud instruments to Yahweh. Hezekiah spoke encouragingly to all the Levites who had good understanding in the service of Yahweh. So they ate throughout the feast for the seven days, offering sacrifices of peace offerings and making confession to Yahweh, the God of their fathers. The whole assembly took counsel to keep another seven days, and they kept another seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah king of Judah gave to the assembly for offerings one thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep, and the princes gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. All the assembly of Judah, with the priests and the Levites, and all the assembly who came out of Israel, and the foreigners who came out of the land of Israel and who lived in Judah, rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the Levitical priests arose and blessed the people. Their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy habitation, even to heaven.